Hello and Guru Scott. This is part two of our still in supercharger installation video, but it can also be a standalone video for how to replace the fuel pump on a Nissan Xterra. Again, this is a 2011 Nissan Xterra, and we've pulled the fuel pump assembly out of the fuel tank. And if you want to look at part one, you can see how to do that. Not too tough of a job. Just be careful when you're pulling this assembly out that there's a float there, so you're going to have to kind of leverage it out very carefully. So according to the still in instructions, I'm supposed to disconnect um, these connectors. So I'm going to do that. I've tried to get all the fuel out that I could just by dumping it back into the tank, but obviously there's still some left in here, so I have to be careful. Make sure you don't have any fuel sources, I mean uh, ignition sources around. Make sure you're wearing your safety glasses, gloves, whatever you need to protect yourself. So again, first thing I'm gonna do is uh, take out these plugs and then I'll come back and we're gonna see what's next. At this point, this is what it should look like. Um, white goes here, closest towards you from this side. Brown goes there and they just simply pull out. And then on the actual um, fuel pump motor assembly itself, pink is gonna be closest to you and then gray is gonna be furthest away. So you'll need to remember that probably during reassembly so that the pump turns in the correct direction, assuming that it's a DC motor and has direction to it. So um, we're gonna to move to the next step, which is removing the uh, hose from the fuel nipple. So we're gonna, we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna check that out. And then I'll come show you how that's done. So the next thing the instructions say to do is to pull this hose off. It goes down into the uh, pump itself. So what we did is we took this um, Ulfa uh, razor cutter, razor knife, it's very sharp because it's made in Japan. And we cut very carefully so that we could just remove this whole piece. And we cut it carefully so we didn't damage the barb at all. The next thing you do is you pull this bottom section off by popping loose these four little tabs very carefully. You pull them up. I actually used a screwdriver to just carefully get underneath each one and pop it up. And then you have to pull the fuel filter part off which um, it's over here and I'll have to go get it and hand it to uh, show it to you. It looks like this, it's pretty dirty. And it actually just pops into place. So what you do is you take a screwdriver and you just carefully go around and around and around and it pops in on this little small hole, but you pop it loose. Um, mine looks pretty soiled unless it's got some kind of material in here like uh, carbon to absorb dirt. Um, it looks like it's actually something built into the filter assembly. Anyway, this is what my filter looks like after I've taken it out and I'm gonna reuse it on the new pump. So now I'm pretty much ready just to pull the pump out and we'll do that here in a second and I'll show you how that goes. Okay, so what we have to do now is we had to pull the pump out. To get that, we had to expand this piece here and we did it by carefully popping loose the two tabs so that it would release this to go open. So it opened up enough now to where we could get the pump out. So here's the pump. You have to remove this little uh, clip off of it and transfer it to the new pump. And so we'll get that done and then we will come back. Okay, so we've put the new pump in. It's a very tight fit compared to the one that came out. I put the little retaining ring on here from the old pump, took it off very, very carefully, went around and around and around got it off. Put this one on. I actually used a small socket to get it to go on straight. So with uh, any luck at all, this will go on here and sort of just clip into place. So we're going to do that. And then that should be it. So now we're going to um, see what the next step is and I'll be right back. So something we discovered was when you put that little metal ring on this pump here, and you push the filter on, it just pushes the ring all the way down against the pump. The filter doesn't really hold on there. So what we did is instead we put the ring back into the filter assembly. Probably if you bought a new one, it would come with it already installed. And so I used a uh, punch to very carefully and a socket, a socket to sort of get it straight as much as I could. Then I used a punch to go around it very lightly until I went into the hole flush then I pushed it on and now it's firmly on there. So 
Um, I'm very happy with this, totally okay. Um, I think the next thing we're going to be doing is starting to um, put in a new tube here and then um, do a quick wiring change on this um, because we don't have the Bosch pump. So we're going to have to do that and I'll come back and describe how that went. Okay, so I had to take a short break and give Stillen a call because the old pump is a Bosch and it's wired up with a different type of uh, system. One large tab, one small tab. And so I'm going to have to cut the uh, wiring harness here and install this new one they gave me for the Walbro pump. So I wanted to make sure that red goes to pink and black goes to black. So I called them up and they said, yeah, that's exactly the way it is. I didn't want it to end up turning in the wrong polarity and pushing gas the wrong way. In other words, have to pull the tank again and, and uh, switch it around. That would not be good. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do next is install this connector. And then um, I'll come back and we'll go over what we have to do to finish the job. Okay, I've stripped the wires. And one thing I noticed was the pink wire was actually red. You can see the red insulation down inside. So I have them stripped back a little bit. Um, they're about 16 gauge, maybe 14 gauge wires. And I'm ready to put on the uh, crimp connectors or the butt connectors that still in supplied. And I just wanted to make note that you don't solder these or anything because um, they'll corrode. It's, it's galvanic corrosion if you solder them. So you want to make sure you just put them right into the connector and crimp it as it is. So I'm going to crimp it all up and then um, we're going to install the hose that goes here and we'll be finished up. So I'll be back in a minute. I finished um, installing this line now. One thing I noticed is it said in the instructions to cut it the same length as the other line. So I did that and it's got a very tight radius here and the line seems to collapse um, somewhat. So I'm hoping that when it's pressurized the uh, fuel will flow okay. Just don't quite like that really that design compared to this type of hose. This is much more superior because obviously it lets you have a radius without a kink. So I really don't know why they just didn't uh, give us a new hose like this. I think that would have been a better solution. So uh, anyway, we're gonna follow what they did and we're gonna put it back together. So now I'm gonna put on the bottom and then we'll see what's gonna happen after that. All right, we've put the uh, bottom section on with the float. Wiring harness is plugged back in up here. Everything's checked over and ready to go. You sort of interloop these once. That's the way they had it when we took it apart. And so now I'm ready to reinstall it in the tank. So that's really all there is to this video. Thanks for watching. Tschüss.